and the second on the eyes. And you can miss the winner.
Bom dia, Michel. Tudo bom? Salve, Lucas. Bom dia, Toninho. Tudo bom? Tudo bom, Lucas. Tá na hora daqui. Michel. É, de repente. Grande Toninho. Grande Michel, querido. Pô, parabéns, hein? Que maravilha, hein? Puxa, que presente. Conseguimos, hein? Que coisa maravilhosa. Lindo mesmo, hein? Viva! Vou virar mais pra cá. Já tá no desconto, né? Beleza. Vou me mutar aqui para eu ficar aquecer aqui para ficar inspirado. Vou sumir um pouquinho aqui, vou ficar só de butuca, hein? Ele vai entrar às onze e meia, é isso, Michel? Tá bom, Ah, cara, estão todos sem som, não estou indo ligar ali. Ah, não estou indo ligar ali. Ah, não estou
Hello, Lady Galway. How are you? We have some problems. Michel, talvez o Edilson que bloqueou o microfone? Ah, maybe. Edilson. Ok. Oh, now, now we are heard. I couldn't, I, I couldn't delete. So nice to see you. Welcome to Switzerland. <laughs> Thank you for accepting my invitation. How about well, you, Sir Jim? There he is, James. Hi. Right. How are you? Yes. Nice to see you. I'm I'm fine. And you? Hi, everyone. It's so wonderful to be in Brazil. Yeah, welcome to Brazil. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very, very nice to have you both. <laughs> it's winter time there, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but we have t-shirts now. We are dressing t-shirts. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you listen for Yes. Um, would you like us to close the light behind my husband? Is it too much light? Can you see his face? Mm, from very far. Yeah, I'm going to, when we're there, we we're going to play for you first, so we're here. Yeah. And then I'm going to move the camera. Okay. But you know, we, I'm, I'm the stage person today. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to sit there. But how is the light? It's too much light or no? No, I don't think so. I think it's very, very, very nice like this. Okay, great. Will you let us know when you're ready? When you have okay. We can wait just one minute more. And I, I, I will just say how it will gonna work yeah. in Portuguese yes because a lot of people do not speak English maybe it's yes. a little bit easier to to talk in Portuguese of course and then I I will give the the words it's okay for and, you and if you want to interpret yeah you want to interpret put your put your finger up okay Okay. okay, and then I will be watching. I will be watching you, and then he will stop because he will be teaching a little, you know. So if you want to go like this, okay? Yeah. Good. No problem. Or go like this. Yeah. What mean? <laughs> so he's coming to welcome us in Portuguese, and he'll be interpreting throughout the session. All right. So you're going to come here first. Right. But you can wait a moment if you like. Uh, I like. You like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Carolina, Carolina, do you hear me? Yeah, I do. Eu acho que a gente pode começar. Ok. Oh, Bem-vindos a todos. É um prazer tê-los aqui, né? Agradecendo a, a família Sir James e Lady Galway por terem aceitado essa. Eu acho que é uma coisa inédita aqui no Brasil, né? Eles acho que nunca tocaram 
quando eles teriam vindo, aconteceram, aconteceram alguns problemas e eles acabaram não vindo. Então, é, como será esse Masterclass? Eles vão tocar um, um dueto de abertura, depois eles vão abrir para uh, perguntas e, e eles vão responder. Então, acho que seria legal quem tiver perguntas, tem essas uh, no bate-papo, não, reações, eu acho que para pedir a palavra, não abrir o microfone, senão vai ser uma bagunça, tá? Então, todo mundo pede a palavra e eu, a gente passa a palavra para vocês. E depois ele vai falar sobre escalas, respiração, estudos e vai tocar mais alguma coisa para gente. Nós temos uma hora e que seja muito proveitosa a todos. Abraços e bom divertimento. So, Sir and James, Gall Sir James Galway and Lady Galway, thank you very much for accepting my invitation and for spending your time with us. Uh, we are we are in the middle from this crisis. Our students are at home. Uh, the school is closed since middle middle March, and we are trying to keep them uh, motivated. Mm -hmm. So my best gratitude for your generosity. Thank you very much. Okay. Our pleasure. So James, we're very happy to be here, right, James? Yeah, nice to see my old friend. Yes, and welcome to Switzerland. Um, the cows are here. But the flutes are here. <laughs> so do you want to tell them what we're playing? Yeah, we're going to play a Telemann duet. It's uh, a little canon in G major. <laughs> That's why you can't hear them. <laughs> okay. So, James, you want to talk to them? Oh, yes. Uh, am I standing up doing this? Or no, can you I can sit down? Can and I will bring, I will bring, close them behind. Yeah. Okay, Michelle? Okay. Very nice. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Sir James is going to sit down and I will bring the camera to him. Okay? Okay. Yeah. You want to talk to them from your your place. This is our new music room. Everyone's getting to see our new music room. Olha que legal. Então esse é o quarto de música novo deles, da casa deles. And these are my loudspeakers. Those are his loudspeakers. Little loudspeakers we have. As caixas de som dele. You better hear the Pink Floyd on this. Ele vai ouvir, so, ele vai ouvir Pink Floyd. And behind here is music and things. Okay, so now let's see if I can bring you to him. Excuse me that I'm doing this one-handed. Okay, is this good, Michelle? Yeah, it's very Close good. Close enough? Close enough? 
Yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit closer, if it's possible. Perfect. Now, now we see just Safanelle yeah, and know. Robert. I know. There we go. How's that? Really good. Okay, there we are. Yeah. Just for you. Okay. Uh, Michelle, what I wanted to talk about, well, first of all, let me ask you, do the kids have any questions for me? I think, I think they have, they do, they do. Who, uh, quem gostaria de, de fazer perguntas para o Sr. James? Eu não vejo todos, mas... Sérgio? Ok, Serginho. Está me ouvindo, Michel? Sim. Tá, é, primeiro, dá os, é, cumprimentar o James, o James Gal por aceitar fazer esse master com a gente, que é né, muito bacana, né? E dizer que eu sou um fã dele, acredito que todo mundo, né? Então, isso me faz uma pergunta. Há duas perguntas, na verdade. É, a carreira de sucesso que ele teve, hum. tanto de orquestra quanto como solista, a pergunta que eu faço para ele é o seguinte, quais foram os grandes desafios da carreira como solista? As grandes dificuldades de manter uma carreira como solista durante tanto tempo? Ah, e também, uma outra pergunta é do repertório é, flautístico, se ele tivesse... Vamos repertório... fazer uma, primeiro uma, vai, primeiro uma. Sr. James. Just a question, yeah. no, no stop beside, just a question. Yeah, just a question, yes. Uh, he wants to know what were the challenges and difficulties to, to have your, in your career, in your solo career. What were, what were the, the most, the biggest challenges and difficulties oh. that you, you had? Well, there, there were, were a lot, you know, because uh, the, 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 biggest, the biggest difficulty was the transition from the Berlin Philharmonic to being a soloist. A, a maior de todas foi a, a transição da, da Filarmônica de Berlim para ficar um solista. Because on the one hand I had tremendous orchestral experience, and on the other hand not so much experience as a solista. <risos> Porque na primeira na, ele tinha as mãos, né, uma carreira com a Berlina Filarmônica como flautista, primeira flauta, e na outra mão ele não tinha a segurança nenhuma, né, do que ia acontecer. And then, uh, of course, I had to figure out what I was going to play and what, why I was becoming soloist and what I was going to do different. So what I did different was to, first of all, to play the Four Seasons arranged uh -huh. for flute. Okay. And this was a big hit. Então, a, pri a primeira, ele tinha o, o, também o desafio de saber o que, que ele ia tocar como solista, né? o que, que ia ser diferente. E o que ele fez foi tocar as quatro estações de, de Vivaldi transcritas para flauta, que, que foi o, o primeiro hit dele, o primeiro sucesso. You see, Michel, if you're going to be a soloist, uh, the, the public has already heard the Mozart D major, they've heard everything like that. They want to hear something new. And you have to play something new that's going to be charming, virtuoso, really brilliant. And that's what the Four Seasons did for me. Porque o, o tocar o Mozart, o trivial, o público já já sabia, né? Todo mundo já já tinha tocado e ele que ele tinha que tocar alguma coisa que realmente fosse de impacto. Então ele tocou as quatro estações que abriram todo o caminho para ele. One of the things I think you did, though, Sir James, is that you already had your audience, because even when you were in the Berlin Philharmonic, you were putting on your own concerts. And this is what is so important for them, and especially now in these times when you have this time, you know, you can be organizing, because one day the concert halls will open your programs and your concerts and how to to reach your audience, right? You did this all on your own. Yes. And they yes. didn't have the internet to use as a mailing list. No. You become your own manager very early on, correct? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you were riding up and down England and everything, yeah, right? Everywhere, everywhere. Next question. Próximo, próxima questão. Quem? Lucas. Posso fazer inglês, né, Michel? Sim. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Lady Jane. Hi, Sir James. Miss you very, Lucas, very much. So good to see you. So good to see you again. 
Uh, so to be very straight, uh, which countries nowadays would you recommend for furthering uh, my studies or studies for students in general for the flute? Oh, you, can, you can translate. <laughs> ah, desculpa. Eu perguntei para eles qual país que eles recomendam para continuar os estudos hoje em dia. There you go. Well, we find, I think, Europe still is a reasonable place and also, right? What's this? Is this for studying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of things you want to look at. Who's playing do you admire? What do they have to offer? Is there an orchestra there? Is there the possibility that you'll be able to play maybe in that orchestra and be able to hear music? And is it affordable? Because being a musician is a long road and it's expensive, as you know. I mean, we find that there's some great, as we've discussed before, Lucas, there's some great teachers right now in Germany and Italy. You know? And you want, you want to get in a, a, a city where there's a big time orchestra, like Berlin Phil. Uh, Leipzig. Leipzig. Leipzig is great. Vienna. Munich. Munich. You know, and there's many, many good teachers there also. I mean, in Munich, you have the opera, you have the Bayerisch Rundfunk, you have the radio, you have, right? Yeah, Munich Philharmonic. Yeah. And uh, you, you want to study with a player who plays in one of these orchestras because when they need six flutes or something for a Mahler symphony, they will wow. ask you. You know, a, a friend of ours is the solo flutist of the London Symphony, Gareth Davies. And two summers ago, uh, or was it last summer, his whole flute section, something happened. One was in an accident, one, one went on holiday, something else. He was going on tour and he had no flutes. <laughs> so who did he use but his students? And then they had a piece for nine flutes. They had to do the messe and, and these flutists were traveling all over first class in Europe, you know, besides learning with a great flutist. So you have a lot of these people that come to Brazil and give these master classes, you know, and really take advantage of them. But re you also have to look at who is going to be there because there's one thing to, you need a teacher who's there regularly. Some of these people maybe have five and six jobs and they're there once every two months. So you want to ask these questions. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. And again, we will always assist. Don't forget. Thank you to, very much. <laughs> think about Amsterdam. Amsterdam, yes, yeah, we recommend sure. that. Kirsten and Lucerne. Uh, uh, well, Lucerne, <laughs> yeah, us. <laughs> now that there's lockdown, yes. we're here all the time. <laughs> yeah, I would, can... I would love Amsterdam. I'm, you know, I, I love Kirsten. <laughs> so, okay. so resumindo, just, just, just to resume, ele perguntou onde estudar, né, o Lucas e o Sir James e Lady Jeanne falaram que para procurar normalmente uma grande cidade onde tem boas orquestras, onde normalmente poderiam até estudar com flautistas dessas grandes orquestras, e mesmo seria mais simples até de, de tocar nessas orquestras, porque se eles precisam de, de flautistas para as grandes obras, então eles poderiam pegar você como aluno e levar você para, para a orquestra para começar a sua carreira. Basicamente é isso. Alguém, quem, alguém mais? Difícil de ver todas as páginas, né? Questions? I guess no questions. <laughs> Joana, ok. Joana Araújo. Não... Uh, é, eu queria saber a, o conselho deles para um flautista no início de carreira. Ok. Uh, any any tips for a beginner flutist? What what, what should a beginner flutist? This is very difficult know? because I don't know how beginner she is. You know. <laughs> well, I think I think you can resort to the way you teach her. First. É difícil de, de, de falar porque ela não, não sabe qual quanto iniciante você seria. I think she should look at my teaching online thing. This first flute. Tem, tem o, o site do Sir James que chama-se First Flute. Que, It's a series of lessons. Que tem uma série de, de lições online que você pode é, pesquisar e, e olhar lá. Ele tem dá conselhos para isso. But you really want to get your scales and arpeggios 
uma, uma coisa básica seria estudar escalas e arpejos. Isso seria uma coisa básica, assim. So that's why I have on my music stand Tafanel and Gobert because I practice it every day. Isso é a coisa que ele, o livro Tafanel e Gobert não, não sai da estante dele, que ele estuda isso diariamente. I think also with these, anyone, no matter what level, especially beginners, to to work to to work on something that's their level, not to start pushing themselves, because you you have to develop your if you develop your foundation of playing very well, which is what Sir James is going to speak about now, um, then you're starting with a very good base, and you will progress correctly and fast. Uma coisa que ela que ela acha muito importante. É para vocês sempre tocarem músicas no nível de vocês e não muito acima do nível de vocês, para ter uma base muito sólida, tá? Isso é muito importante. So talk about all your basics. So the basic thing you want to get is a breathing. A coisa mais básica que a gente tem que ter é a respiração, né? Yes, and the uh, um, tone development. E o desenvolvimento de, da sonoridade. Scales. Escalas. Etude. Etudos, estudos. And or orchestra studies and repertoire. Excertos orquestrais e daí o repertório. And as a beginner, you need very good hand position. Yes. And you need to pay attention to the position of the hands. E, e também a posição das mãos, né? Yeah, like that. Como as, como isso? Ele tá. Explain where your pressure points are very quickly. Yeah, the pressure points are here. Os pontos here. de pressão, né? Ele tá And mostrando. Here. São três, né? Mão direita, polegar. Segurar a flauta no indicador da mão esquerda e na yeah. na embocadura. Okay, next. Quem deixa eu ver alguma pessoa? It's it's difficult because because we have three pages uh, and I uh, I don't. Michelle, see they could. Michelle, if they go into participants, they can use the raise hand from there, and you can see. Yeah. It yeah. Você pode, quem quiser, por exemplo, vai na reações e, e marca alguma coisa que eu que eu encontro vocês daí. Yeah, it's hard. Sorry, I don't have a And? Let's uh, change the name, Michelle. Samuel. Okay. No. Text the questions. Uh, so we have them all filed. And then we can pick some. Uh -huh. That would be great. Because Sir James wants to give a little lesson here also. Yeah, right. that's... Um, Marceli. Marceli wants, wants to, to ask something. Okay. Uh -huh. É, eu queria perguntar se teve algum momento da carreira dele que foi mais dificultosa ou outro mais divertido e se ele tem algum período musical ou alguma peça que ele se sinta mais confortável em tocar, que ele goste mais de tocar. Uh -huh. uh, so... What were your difficult moment in your career and the funniest moment in your career and which is the your uh, uh, most uh, the piece that you most like to play oh the piece i most like to play is a mozart d major concerto o concerto em ré maior de mozart é a peça yes. que ele mais gosta de tocar most difficult time in your career difficult time you broke the legs <laughs> <laughs> difficult time was when i had two broken legs and a broken arm ele ele teve um acidente né ele quebrou as duas pernas quebrou o braço That was really difficult. <laughs> it was the beginning of your career too. Yeah, it was. You, he had just left the Berlin Philharmonic to become that, a soloist. You remember? That was that? in Engelberg. In Bosville. In Bosville, okay. Yeah, but still. And then what? Four months in the hospital. Six. Six months in the hospital. Ele ficou seis meses internado no hospital para se se mover. Então, esse foi o momento mais difícil, eu acho. And one of the greatest moments in your career, you've had so many highlights. Yeah, you know, playing with Henry Mancini at the, the White House. 
playing in Buckingham Palace for the Queen, things like this. But I would prefer that you ask me questions about flute playing. <laughs> me too. You know, because this is why we're here. Ele, não, ele, acha que, ele acha que mais interessante perguntar coisas sobre tocar flauta, não sobre curiosidades, teoricamente. Então, é, outra, Samuel. Qual, quem é Samuel? Samuel, please. Ok. Eu, uh, eu queria perguntar para o Sr. James. Eu vou prestar uma prova no final do ano. Eu nunca toquei para uma banca na minha vida. Se ele tem alguma dica para me preparar psicologicamente, é, me preparar para repertório, essas coisas. Ok. Uh, Samuel asked you uh, if you have a tip. He never played for a jury before and he has a test in the end of this year. Yes, you have very, a tip. very simple. Play everything from memory. Muito simples a resposta, para tocar tudo de memória e... <laughs> Você se sairá bem. Because then you will really know the music. Que é, aí você saberá realmente as músicas, a música. Yeah. Um, Next. Practice oh, the sorry. pieces you're going to play on the day before, right up to the minute you're going to play. Yeah, play them for other people. Play them for your friends. You know, really play it in. Two months before, you should be playing that whole program for, uh, for different groups of people, so you're very comfortable. Pra para você treinar, né? convidar pessoas para você treinar isso, treinar, tocar para pessoas. Isso, isso que é a dica deles. You know, dealing with nerves is only a matter of experience. Being prepared, of course, and practicing behind, but be experience. And you get the experience by playing in front of others. Don't let the jury or the audition be the first time you're getting up there to play your program. Certo. Yeah. Uh, Marcelo Álvarez, see the Argentina. We have we have friends from Argentina, Chile, Peru, uh, Brazil. Oh, welcome. Uh, yeah, fifteen countries around the world. Thank you. Fantastic. Marcelo hola, Álvarez, Jeffrey. hola. ¿Cómo estás? Bueno, Bien. muchísimas gracias por la invitación. Quiero preguntarle al maestro y a Lady Jane. Sobre estos dos caracteres eh, muy contrastantes del sonido del flautista, que, bueno, obviamente James Galway ha logrado muy bien, que es el tener graves con mucho cuerpo, por un lado, como lograr tener graves con mucho cuerpo, y a la vez tener en el registro agudo la posibilidad de, de tener pianos con un color, un lindo color en, en nuestro sonido. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about sounds, sound. In the lo sí. low, low register, how to do a, a big, big sound in the low register, and uh, a lot of colors in piano in the high register. How, how, how to, to do this? Well, this, this you have to study in some various books and also pieces. You know, you know this exercise that I wrote. Ele, ele vai mostrar alguns exercícios. Mm -hmm. This one, you have to have a flexibility to play from here. Tem que ter muita flexibilidade para tocar isso. When you when you play the book of Moyes, the study, it's sort of abstract, like this. You see, it doesn't teach you how to play in a piece. You know. Ele fala que o Moise não, não ensina como tocar numa peça, né? Por ser só essas duas notas, né? And Moise, for the low notes, he has this really terribly boring exercise. But it works. <laughs> yeah. 
So, Esses são os, os moízes para o registro grave, né? que são chatos. Eu prefiro jogar uma peça de música e jogar ela tão suave como isso. Ele acha que tocando peças de música, né, peças musicais, fica muito mais simples de, 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 de achar a expressão musical né, e, colo, e cor, cores do que tocar só o exercício de Moise onde tem duas notas. Então, aplicar isso na música. And sometimes I take a, a simple song like this. You see, now there you have to change your embouchure for. Então, tem todas, tem todas essas mudanças de embocadura, né? Todas essas mudanças de embocadura para encontrar o timbre, né? Ou as cores. Ele, ele pratica isso daí porque não vai acontecer assim do nada, né? É uma prática realmente. And all these exercises are the same thing for beginner as for a more advanced player. These concepts. E esse for the exercício... Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead, say what you were going to say. Ah, e esses exercícios são desde os, os iniciantes até os profissionais. É, uma, é um exercício que serve para todos. Sorry. Yeah. Now, you have to have three different embouchures to begin with. Você tem que ter três so diferentes you... embocaduras. Embouchure number one. Embocadura número um. Número dois. something like for example in, in these little studies from Kohler number two for example, this, is what it sounds, this is what it sounds like normally right now if you're practicing your then you do Sounds completely different because you are employing the exercises that you've prepared before. Então, ele, ele demonstrou né, que essa mudança de timbre, de cores, por causa das embocaduras que você utiliza, utilizou nos exercícios anteriores. Now, I'm going to play for you the curler exercise number one. Ele This vai tocar. 15 easy exercises number 
Ele vai tocar o, o exercício de Köhler, número um dos exercícios fáceis. Normalmente, it goes like this. Incorporating all the little diminuendos, loud embouchure, soft embouchure, embouchure. You should always have the correct embouchure for the register in which you're playing. And in these embouchures, they have also, let me say, um, different uh, dynamics. You know, you have an embouchure for low. <laughs> Try to play with all these different colors. You make experiment with the embouchure for the low notes, really down into the flute, open the mouth really wide inside. Então, uma, emboc uma embocadura para a região grave, né? Aberta, né? com cores, etc. Then you look at this exercise and you say, why should I be doing this? Well, Maybe you want to per perfect this articulation. Esse exercício também tem essa parte da articulação, né? Dá para trabalhar bastante a articulação. Próxima coisa. Is this articulation. Outra articulação. Practicing your diminuendo, practicing your staccato, practicing a long staccato, which is different. 
praticar todas essas, né, diminuindo, estacato, de... That's a different articulation. Esse More é um exemplo broad. de outra articula articulação. So you have to practice these in the scales. Now, the first thing that you do is you get this big yellow book <laughs> of tap and L, <laughs> and you start doing the daily exercises, which is these things. <laughs> And you do the articulation part. And then you do it an octave higher. Can you tell them what articulation you're doing there? Yes, in a minute, just a moment. Uh, now, there is, some people say, oh, you don't need to practice an, an octave higher because it's the same fingering. It may be the same fingering, but it's a totally different octave, sure. Então, isso é importante de ser falado, que algumas pessoas falam, ah, não precisa tocar na oitava de cima, não precisa estudar a oitava de cima. Precisa sim, porque é uma outra embocadura. Né? A articulação pode ser, o dedilhado pode ser o mesmo, só que a, a embocadura é outra, né? é uma segunda embocadura. Now, these, these exercises are very long. And it would take, if you wanted to play every note, it would take almost a day. So you, <laughs> you, you do just two or three, like this. Maybe, maybe up to F. Then you decide, okay, up the autumn. Etc. So you come to and then you leave it. You don't play the whole three pages because you go completely crazy. É, é para estudar, é para escolher, né? Alguns exercícios não vai fazer tafanel, se não vai, vai ter que ser feito o dia inteiro. Então escolha, porque senão fica meio lelé da coca em português. Mas then, you know, let me just. When you ask somebody, do you play tafanel? They say, oh yes, I do, and they start immediately off. So that then you you, you go to exercise number three. Depois você vai para o exercício número 3. Yeah. And this is a very good exercise. Esse é um muito bom exercício. You learn the same fingering except you change one note each time. First of all it starts off in C major. And then you, then you have one flat which puts it in F major, but you still start on C like this. <laughs> exercise A and the next day you do exercise B which is at the bottom of page 117. <laughs> in the big book, in the big in the version big, of the book. Yeah. And it's this. 
you go on to other exercises then comes the most famous one exercise number four which everybody thinks is going to be their salvation to flute playing o exercício mais famoso é o exercício número quatro que pode ser todo mundo pensa que é a salvação do tocar flauta then comes one very important one it's number five o exercício número cinco And you do one every day. It's A, B, C, D, E, Now, do you know how many times chromatic scales come? Vocês sabem quanto tempo vem as escalas, né? That's only one. It's <laughs> you know this one? An esco. Enesco, chaminade, de Enesco. Yeah. O Rê. incorporate your exercises into the pieces that you're going to play. Now comes the next one, which is in thirds and sixths. And then there's another one for playing across the break. You don't need to practice the whole of the exercise, just a bit of it will do it. Não, não tem que tocar sempre o exercício inteiro, um pouco de, de cada um já, sei, já é uma grande coisa. So you know what the exercises I'm talking about is this one. Yes. And they're not too difficult to play, but you learn an enormous amount. You know, in the first one, you learn this articulation, da 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 da, right? And also da 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 da. And then you learn octaves, da 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 da, right? And this, these are all things which you come across in pieces which you will play. Right now, the second one is interesting. Normally, people when they play this, they, they don't do it, they don't look at the high note, it's just another note, throw away, look. Now, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp is a difficult note on the flute. In the low notes, it's difficult because it's difficult to find a good embouchure for that note. Because in the low register, there's two embouchures that you need. One from C sharp to G, and then all change, or going down to the low notes. 
Oh, ele, ele, ele falou que para a região grave, na verdade, ainda essa embocadura é dividida em duas embocaduras. Né? Uma da, do, do, si, do sustenido até o sol e depois do sol até o grave. Para para essas para essas notas graves precisa de uma embocadura grande assim aberta, né? So James, so, yes, sir. Someone, someone is asking about uh, an exercise for the double tonguing. Oh, we're uh, getting to that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we uh, are just getting to that. Do you have this book? <laughs> do you have the Taffanel book? Yeah. There's 14 pages about tonguing in it. <laughs> Então, alguém, eu estou perguntando aqui a pergunta, não lembro de quem aqui que eu estou lendo no chat, sobre o estacato duplo, né? Então, ele falou que estava indo exatamente para isso. Você tem um grande exercício para isso. Sim, você sabe, a primeira coisa que você precisa fazer é não jogar muito tempo. Você sabe, algumas pessoas que fazem isso para fazer isso para fazer isso. A primeira coisa que você precisa fazer é não fazer isso. <laughs> you know, just this will do. A primeira coisa a fazer para esse duplo estacato é encontrar um, um exercício que seja fácil. Yeah, just coming right up. I can find it. What I find um, with a lot of my students is they don't practice double tongue. They just all of a sudden have to do it in their piece and they're trying to do it within the piece. But like Sir James always says, is do it away from the piece also. And he'll show you now. Ele vai mostrar agora o que fazer. Okay, here it is. Exercise number nine. Exercício número nove no Tafanel e Gobert. No, no, no. No, Kohler. 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 Sorry, no é Tafanel. No é Tafanel e Gobert. Sorry. Thank 
Isso foi ele tocou com o staccato simples, tá? Because okay. you have to you have to be able to have a good single tone before antes, you can... antes de tudo você tem que ser capaz de, de tocar muito bem o golpe simples de língua antes de fazer o duplo. Because you need to find a place for your tongue and it's forward. Forward makes a good clear sound. Você tem que encontrar, né, a, a língua tem que tem que estar na frente assim. Né? Oh, I'm trying to think of Anderson Opus 15. No, I think also mm -hmm. number nine. Sorry. B flat. <laughs> All right. Number nine B is the same thing, but like this. You see, so there, that's how you do it. You start single tongue, get a good, clear single tongue, and you can do it in the scales, you know. Então, a primeira coisa a ser feita é ter um ótimo golpe simples de, de língua antes de, de ter um final de destacado duplo. Você disse às vezes para mim que a língua não tem que ser no centro. Sim, você sabe, a lot of people think that you have the tongue straight ahead. But people like Dennis Boryakov has a very special one, but sure, it's sort of sideways. And he, and he has great articulation because he moves his tongue to the ideal city. Place. Todo mundo fala para ter a língua bem bem na frente, mas não é o que, por exemplo, o Denis Buriakov, ele tem uma embocadura diferente, é que funciona super bem, na verdade. Não, you know, this double tonguing is a problem because people don't practice it. Therefore, you have the Dante and Presto of Enesco, which the Presto goes like this. Right? Instead of... That's how to practice the tonguing. But you know, the operative word is practice. When you see the French people have a, a book, the standard book in France has 14 pages about tonguing. <laughs> And when you look, when you look at uh, other methods by lesser people, there's maybe two pages about double tonguing <laughs> or tonguing. And you know, the tonguing is very interesting subject because it's not always the same. It's sometimes it's softer and sometimes, you, you know, if you, if you think about a violin player who has a bow and he goes bang, that's the good single tone. Then he goes softer, right? So where do we, how do we do that on the flute? Well, it's very easy, don't tongue, look.
need to come. You see, a soft tongue or no tonguing. I mean, when you start up remedial, it's not necessary to go. You can go. See, so you have to learn to do this sort of articulation and use it, the right, use the right bow stroke in the right place. I think it'd be very helpful if you talked about breathing. Just, just, I will just translate uh, the resume of that. Go ahead. Uh, então ele, ele acha que depende muito de onde utilizar as articulações, né? ele chegou a comparar a nossa língua com o, o arco do violino, então tudo vai depender da, da música, da articulação, dá para fazer articulações mais é, leves, né? soft articulations, e, e tudo vai depender né? de, de estudos e, e da ocasião que vai ser utilizada a articulação. Um belo resumo. Next. Breathing. Oh, oh, breathing. Yes. Yes. Breathing is most important. Most important. Respiração agora. Because you you want to get to the end of the phrase with enough breath to hold the last note on longer. That means it has more support. So when you take a breath. You inflate here and here. Breathe with your belly. Tentar encontrar uma respiração superior e inferior né? na barriga, no, no peito. So when you go to play, you breathe in, stop. If you don't take enough breath, this is what happens. You can't, you have no control. But when you take a good breath, Isso que ele falou é muito importante, né? Então esse começo é respirar, dar essa parada antes de, de atacar, né? antes de começar, para ter uh, ar suficiente para chegar, para fazer as frases. How we doing? Ask Michelle. How we doing, yeah, Michelle? I, I think I, I think it's. <laughs> It's time, I think. Uh, are you gonna to are you gonna play a, a final piece? Oh, he's gonna play you something, but you want to talk to him about not moving, James. Not moving. Yes. You know when when you see people playing these days, this is what it looks like. What do you want to tell in this piece by Mozart? Well, it's a little serenade. And if you're serenading your girlfriend who is on the balcony and you're downstairs and you're playing, you're not going to be she will think you're a little bit right. So therefore you take it. Ele vai tocar o quarteto de Mozart, né? O segundo movimento. Então, para pensar que é uma serenata para sua namorada que está no, 
na terraça, assim. different sort of breaths that you take. At the beginning, you take a good one, right? And as you go on, you take a little one to get from here to here, right? Ele está explicando as diferentes respirações que a gente pegaria para tocar essa música. Do you understand what I'm talking about the breathing? <clears throat> I think yes. Okay. Right. Well, I would like to play you something that really needs a lot of good press. Bravo. So, in, in name of all these flutists, uh, I would like to thank you. All my gratitude. I, I don't have words to to say. Thank you. Uh, it was fantastic time with you both. Well, we'd love to visit you all again. Uh, we'd love to come to your countries, of course. But at the moment, we could be. Uh, visit you again. We could organize that next month if you like. Yeah. And also, if you'd like to visit us more in Switzerland, um, okay. from July uh, online, online from July 19th to 27th, we oh, will be is. live every day, all day, with lessons with Sir James, lessons with me, lots of great guests, artists, concerts, um, talks from people in the profession. We have conductors, we have orchestra managers, we have composers coming on. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful festival called the Galway Flute Festival. We've made it for you. 
And we have a special discount rate for uh, visitors that, Michelle, we will give you in June for, yeah. for anyone who would like to join. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Michelle, one thing we didn't talk about, you know, the kids are always asking about flutes. Yeah. And I designed a head joint for Gemein Heart. Uh -huh. And they have a flute called Crusader. And this, this head joint is made completely by machine. So yeah. there's no, 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 no scraping errors. Interesting. You know? but it, it's a great head It's piece. a copy. You were, he worked very hard on this. It took quite a while. Uh, it's actually, we wanted to have an instrument and a head joint for them that they can afford that's very like this, that responds like this and that speaks, gives the colors, and you don't have to pay this kind of money to get this. Galway, it's called um, Crusader. Galway Crusader Flute by Gemeinhardt. By Gemeinhardt, okay. Yeah, it's an American company and we're very proud of it. And we've done it just for you, not just to have another flute on the market, we can tell you. It's not of interest. Very, very to... nice, you know. Great. Eles, eles falaram que é depois, a gente fala depois. Thank you very much, sir and lady Galway. Guys, on behalf the Buckley Institute, we would like to thank you to give this opportunity to our students and to all the students around the world. And uh, I would like uh, one second, so if we can smile and take a picture. Oh, then let me get up a little. Yeah. Well. <laughs> all right. Okay, first page. Smile. <laughs> I'm going second now, okay? Pessoal, abre as câmeras para a gente fazer as fotos. Oh, Edilson. Oh, já tô na segunda página. Still smiling? Yes. <laughs> Mais uma, terceira. Aí, moçada, muito obrigada. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. And send Thank that you. to us and we'll post it for you. Thank you. Bye, Lady. Bye, Thank, bye. You bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. bye. Happy practicing. Bye, everyone. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're Bye. welcome. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Take care. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Thank you for, for your knowledge.